that some of you may remember that I participated in Junk Journal July back in 2022, I believe. And some of my videos are posted in my channel as well. And I have a playlist on some of the things that I had done. I also have it on my Instagram uh, some of the videos and some of the uh, pages that I did while participating in John Journal July. And so I wanted to try it again this year. I've also have been thinking of making myself an ideas book. And I first heard Donna from Junk Journal Ideas mentioned it way back and I was watching her video on how she made hers and I thought well you know I should why don't I just put both of them together and do it today so I wanted to take you guys with me and show you um, how I do my accordion journal and we can maybe do it together this time around I decided I was going to use my paper bag I have I only have one of these paper bags that I saved and so I am going to use as much as can, I can from it to be part of the cover. So here I have two of them. So this one that I have for Junk Journal July on the left is a smaller size than the one on the right. The one on the right was an accordion journal I made by um, Forti Femoremba watching 49 Dragonflies and Louisa Heinzel. And I just thought, look how cute these tickets. I still have tickets in here in a little <laughs> shaker um, um, jar. <laughs> cute. And these pictures, oh, see, this is so cute. It's good to look at your stuff that you've made in the past because it can inspire you again to come up with something new. But these are things that I made myself and I never finished it and I need to. So I might take some time while doing those creations for Junk Journal July and maybe do some of these prompts as well. And um, maybe add it into the video so that you guys can watch as well so I can have some kind of an idea book. Like this one has a little pocket in the front and it has a bag and I wrote the name in the front with some brads. And then this one, I think this one was my first one, but I can't remember what, yeah, I think it was 22 or 23. I think it was 22, yeah. And I had so much fun making this one. I did a little pocket in the front. I made it twice, actually, the, the whole prompt list. I needed to make it bigger because I couldn't see the small one. And so this one was a smaller size, but it was like a perfect size for it. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it like that. I think I need a little bit bigger because I want to incorporate some painting, drawing, things like that that I like to do in my personal journal. So I want to add that here. I want to add everything that I like to do into this journal. So I'm thinking that maybe I'm going to have like a five inch or five and a half inch wide page and then the length I'm probably gonna have it at maybe nine or eight and a half I'm not sure it's usually what my size is for my journals that is more comfortable for me to write in and draw and add any ephemera that I create and some of these pieces of paper I'm gonna save because I could use that for tags or something from when I do a um, another type of journal or as a background or anything anything like that I don't save it all but I say whatever is good so this has a gusset um, I don't think I'm gonna keep it it's not gonna be very big maybe I'm not sure I'll probably just cut the size that I need because I don't want it so wide so I'll take about an inch from one side and two inches from the other and see where it takes me. And you don't hear um, background noises of um, cutting the paper or anything like that because it was pretty loud in here. You would have heard the whole ordeal of conversations. So I figured I should just um, do a voiceover on this video.
So here I thought I was going to be able to keep that double page in there, but it didn't work out that way. But that's okay because I'm going to sew around it. So I just took the extra um, papers that were in there that were cut out and uh, save it for any other project that I needed for. Now I'm going to take off the two inches on the other side of the paper and get rid of all of the excess paper that's in the middle of it as well and then see if that is the size that I want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew around it and just leave the one side open. And at this point I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the um, with this bag because originally I wanted to do a accordion journal. And then I thought of, okay, I, what I really want to do is a journal for ideas. And so I think that in between the whole thinking and trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do, I didn't realize, okay, maybe I should just take all these handles off. I'm not just going to do just one, one journal uh, with this paper, you know, a full journal just with the whole bag. Um, my intention was to use the whole bag to create a accordion journal. And then I realized after the fact that I wasn't doing that, I was trying to do a journal full journal for ideas so here is the paper and the calendar and it has like notes it's really nicely organized it even has questions so like if you get stuck and you don't even know what you want to do uh, they did a really good job in setting up questions so that you can set you know figure out what it is that you would like to um, work on but I'm going to be using these last two pages. She gave us um, two freebies here with some snippets of um, pictures and things that she used. And I think that's what I'm going to use for the cover and the back cover of my um, journal. So we'll see what we're going to do. First, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the bag and the paper bag. And I'm going to create the front cover and the back cover with it. So I'm going to take it apart. So the whole decision was to make it into a five and a half um, by, I believe it's eight and a half or nine, which is usually my normal size of my journals because that's what I like to use especially if I'm going to write or color or do whatever in it. And I intend to do all of that in this journal. Anything that I like to do, that's what I'm going to be doing in this journal. So hopefully I can film all of those videos and everything that I do in this journal. I will try my best to do it um, and film it and post it for you guys to watch. Um, that would be great. But in the meantime, I have been pretty busy uh, going on interviews for work. I have to go back to work, of course. Um, we just purchased a home, so I have to help my husband, of course. And uh, now um, I don't really have to do other things. I've been taking care of my health. I'm still taking care of my health. I have a lot of other things that I need to work on. But I am adding little by little and I don't intend to feel like this sick forever. And since I've managed to get uh, better at what I'm eating, what I've gotten rid of and things like that, it has helped a lot to change uh, the way that I feel and, and things that I was going through. So here's when I decide that I'm going to cut it and just do the front and the back cover instead of just using the whole thing as a journal because, see, I was thinking I want to be able to create into this journal anything that I want and if I want to add to it, I can add to it more. So that's the reason why I like the accordion journal because it can grow as much as you want it to. And you saw the other one that I showed you before. I've had um, pretty big um, uh, 
things that I made in the page and it took a lot of space and it's perfect. This I love it. I think that's the best kind of journal you can use, especially when you're learning and you're trying new things. So I can very well create the pages with um, magazines or whatever book pages I have and then I can cover them if I don't want to see that. You know, I can start by painting it or put gesso on it or whatever it is but we'll see what happens in the meantime what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew around it and I'm gonna leave one side open so that it can become a pocket on both in the front cover and the back cover okay so now that I have the two parts this one has a pocket on this side this one has a pocket on this side so I'm gonna take away all of the um threads that are are coming out on the side so they be nice and clean and then I'm gonna go ahead and pick one for the front and one for the back okay so here I'm gonna show you what I have I have a few pieces of paper card stock or cardboard some extra pages but I do have this magazine that I took apart and I was using to create some other journals and I'm going to use these pages and I'm going to create the accordion journal with it. And the thing, the good thing about this is that whatever you use, you can always cover. So like the last time that I did my accordion journal, I used it with paper bags. A whole bunch of paper bags that I had I cut it to size and then I made it into an accordion journal and then I covered it with coffee dyed paper this time around I'm not doing that I'm gonna leave it so that it could be part of the project because I don't know if I want to cover it with paint or if I want to cover it with a paper or a napkin or whatever it doesn't matter or if I want to leave it like that and incorporate on that on that specific page just because I like what's in that magazine page. So here you see I already started um, measuring and seeing how I'm going to do this. At first, I started doing it this way, the way the the right way the magazine is, so how you look at it. But then later on, you will see how I realized that the page actually fits perfect when you turn it sideways. And you'll see that throughout in this video. So here is when I realized the page turned on sideways fit perfect. It was the perfect size for it. So I just trimmed it a little bit on the edges because that one was a little rough. But you know you can do that at the end too. It was just I needed to get it done that way. So what I was doing was to connect the pages I would just add uh, glue to like maybe like an inch size of it. And, and then put it together and then I will start folding it to the size of the book cover. So my book cover is, like I said, the uh, paper bag. And that's how I started that one. But you see, I just make sure that it was completely even from the top to the bottom, glued it together, and I have a whole page. I did not break the page, but at first, when you saw the 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 process in the beginning of creating the second page for the journal I was cutting the page on the side and then cut it on the bottom and I was like wait a minute I don't need to do that I can very well just fold it and then 
keep adding more to it and then at the end I can trim it okay so here is another uh, part that I was getting a little bit confused too I had forgotten all about how I did the um, folding of the pages to fit right and so that it's not like one bigger than the other and things like that and I didn't realize how I needed to get it done until a little bit into the whole um, folding and whatnot and how I realized what I needed to do was to make sure that the page edge at least on one side whether you pick the top or the bottom of the journal you have to make sure that when you fold the page it meets evenly on one side so for example you see here how I'm just folding it and not paying attention to how it's actually um, folding if it's um, sideways or kind of lopsided and whatnot I was trying to make it even so I couldn't like I couldn't figure it out I kept doing the same thing trying to make sure that it was okay and then I would fix it again and then I would put it again and then I realized right here okay so if I pick one side to make sure the paper is even all I have to do is just pass the bono folder over it and it's even and there you go and I'm like that's what I was doing I totally forgot all about it but I remembered as I was doing it so I'm trying to let you know right now see this is the front cover fold it this is the front page then comes the next one now I'm gonna add another page to the edge of this one so I'm gonna take these two pages apart and I'm gonna use one sheet but I'm gonna turn it sideways to fit so then after a little bit I figured okay I'm gonna put it in my mat where it shows the line to make sure that I actually do just one inch and that is even on both sides top and bottom so that when I am folding it to the one side which is the bottom portion that I picked to make sure that is even it will be even here is when they realized I'm putting it right on the inch so that it stays there but I was looking at the mat you see how I have my my mat showing inch per, by inch is measuring it so it's easier so here we go again I make sure I fold it right at the corner where it's supposed to be make sure the bottom is completely even even on the bottom from end to end and then grab my bow folder bone folder and fold it and it will be completely even and I don't have to worry about it being a bigger page than the other and here we go again I put it again the leftover of the page and put it in the boxes right there evenly and just put glue only for that inch from top to bottom and then grab another sheet of paper sideways again because it fit perfect and just do that inch from top to bottom make sure it's even and straight and then it will be easier for me to bend the page again so you see you start in the beginning if even if you've done this a million times you always forget how you did it the first time unless you do it constantly i am not constantly doing this type of journal i like to do my soft cover journals and my hard cover journals and my leather journals which i still have to finish and work on because i put it aside and when i get into something I kind of forget it's like I don't know ADHD you you start one thing and you forget you were working on that one and you end up on another I do that a lot like sometimes I grab the milk and I use it I put it on the counter I walked away because something caught my eye or whatever and then I come back and the milk was still on the counter because I totally forgot to put it in the fridge <laughs> so that's what happens to me when I'm crafting same thing
decided that this part would be the last part that I'm going to do and this bit that is left in the back is what I'm going to use to glue the back cover. And again, it doesn't have to become the back cover. I can always add to it if I want to in the future if I want to make more. But I decided that this one is going to be for Junk Journal July. So I'm going to have enough to have the at least the 31 days, you know, 31 days, maybe a little bit more because I want to add a calendar and some of the pages that she provided in her um, pamphlet here that she get, gave us. So I want to add it in the journal, but I can also fold it and put it inside of the pocket. So whichever, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but in this video, you will only see the construction of the journal and how I do the front cover and the back cover in a collage style with the little snippets and stuff that she provided. And I'll add it a few things on my own. So here I just wanted to make sure that when I put the back cover, the pocket is going to be for the back side. So, so when I turn it around, it's going to be, the pocket is going to be to the right and then the front is going to be to the left. And I'll show you in a moment. So now I just wanted to make sure that it was even with the front. Even if it's showing a little bit of the magazine on the right side, it was fine. So this is the front. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen pages. Now the back has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I do have more than 31 pages and it's perfect. I can do anything I want. I can add the questions when I actually get stuck. I can use um, the page for the notes I can take the calendar and put it in the page so that I think it would be perfect so instead of putting it cutting it in half or whatever I'm just gonna go ahead and use two of the pages in the front and then cover the background because I didn't want to see the magazine so I'll probably collage on those two pages and I can just turn it um, landscape and I can see my calendar. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing now and, and then we'll go from there but here this is the accordion journal and you can get really big and we can fill it up and it doesn't matter it can it can get as big as you want it to be and I love it I even love the magazine because I love that magazine it shows all these things for the kitchen and things for the house I love that so I, I might just leave it that way or I might just cover it I don't know so this is what I have I have some vintage papers some paper bag um, Edith Holden pages. I'm not using napkins, so I'm putting that aside. But I do have book pages, and these are all vintage papers that I buy or antique. And there's little pieces here, so I feel like, yeah, I have plenty of paper that I can use. And these are like my scraps, and some of them are just still good condition that I can use for other books that I'm creating. So I just only keep um whatever i cannot use like a full page on a journal you know i could just go ahead and take these apart and uh collage with them and they're really brittle so you the only way that you can use these pages is to make sure you glue it onto something that is more uh that is sturdy so that it doesn't come apart 
So you see, this is a full page. I will use that on a journal. I could use this one also, maybe not that one. This one is like a, uh, like a uh, document. I'm gonna use that. These are all pieces of and stuff of pages that I cannot use on its own. So of course I'm gonna use it like a for collaging. So if you have any uh, pieces of papers or anything like that that you're not using, just use that for collaging.
Okay, so now that the page is collaged, and you see that you can cover a whole page, even if you don't like the magazine or whatever paper you used, you can cover it. You can collage on it, or you can just find a pretty paper, a digital, it doesn't matter, you just cover it up, and then you can start from there. Right now, what I wanna do is, I wanna use some of this washi tape to create a border. And so, I, I have tons of, of Amity Blooms washi tape that I love to use all the time. So I need to use them a lot more often. So I'm going to go ahead and use the pink one, which is the one that I end up using for the top and the bottom um, border. And then I use a turquoise one with some pink flowers for the calendar. And these are so cute. I think I should have used that other one that I put away. But um, I think that's what I was feeling at the moment. I wanted that pink. And I love the way that looks. It has that green. It has a little bit of that turquoise blue in it as well. So I love it. The only thing you have to be careful when you are putting... Um, washi tape on top of old vintage papers as soon as you put it on it it's going to get stuck and it'll break if you try to pull it off it's not like a regular like if you do it on the magazine and you put the washi tape on it you can actually put it back up but on old vintage paper like that and when it's like book pages it'll get stuck immediately you can't take it off it'll break you know it'll take the whole page off and I realized that when I was trying to like fix it and I, I couldn't pull it back up. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's going to stay there. So you see, I did the border on the bottom and now I'll do it on the top. And you can see through it. So you can see the book page through it. And it's fine. I love that. But you won't see it once I put the calendar. I know I won't see that. So here again, I was trying to fix it, but it was like, nope, that's going to pull the page off. So I decided to just leave it and just cut the edge and just trim it wherever it's sticking out. And that's okay. And it was sticking out a little bit on the other side. So, but later on, I went and I just trimmed it. See, now I'll go ahead and put the calendar on here. And then what I'm going to do is a border on the left and on the right side. You probably noticed I covered the whole background where I did my collage. Well, that's okay because that paper you can see through. So you can see it right through the white paper. At least I can. So it looks good and I wanted to do that. I wanted to see that, but I didn't want to cut the calendar off, you know. Now I was just trying to decide which kind of... Uh, washi tape I wanted to use on the side borders and I ended up with this blue one with the pink flowers and it has some green in it too so it was perfect but you could still see a little bit of the um, papers that I collage in the background on the edges on the side which is what I wanted to see so this is the accordion journal that I made this time around. It is a bit different than the other two that I showed you before, like this one. I did use a cardstock on top of this one, so it's a little bit more sturdier. And maybe I might change my mind later and re redo mine in the front as well, but I don't think so. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. It is bigger, as you can see taller is the same width but mine is a bit taller now so I think I have a little bit more space maybe that's a bit more challenging for me because I got to figure out how to fill out the whole page um, but I mean look how cool I mean I will probably see the difference on how I worked before to how I'm gonna work now you know, I did a lot of experimenting in this year. And to be honest with you, yeah, it was 2022. 
So I'm gonna be doing the same thing, stamping the date, what the prompt was for, like I did here, day four, transparent. And it has this cute little pictures with vellum in the background. So I will do what I can with what I have in the meantime. And we'll see where it goes. I mean, this is so cute. See, I still, I was still using some of these little images that I buy from that same um, person or the same store in, in, in Etsy shop. This is so cute. So it's fun to look at what you did before and what would you do different now. I mean, this one is so cool. I love this part that it has extra paper to write on. That's a really cool idea. And I can incorporate those things in the journals that I create too. But I mean, it things will change. Things look a little bit better, a little different, you know when you make them I mean I love that so I think that's why I love participating in Junk Journal July um, because it just it helps with you know the creative juices um, don't mind this I've I've been pulling a hose to water my plants because the irrigation system um, is having a leak so I had it to get it fixed and I don't have that much strength pulling the the hose so I had to have my husband help me and I was still pulling it so hard it made me uh, get black and blues all over my arms but um, yeah so I just noticed that <laughs> so just in case you see that anyway so I just think it's just so cool this one for some reason it'll get thick and it will get pretty heavy once you start putting things in it so that's probably why i wanted to make it as thin as possible or soft not too much adding extra stuff which i can do while i'm working on it anyway because that was the whole purpose i want to see how i'm going to start how i'm going to cover the page how i'm going to decorated how, what's going to be the background maybe i want to use some mixed media i haven't used my mixed media in forever either and i saw martina just posted a video on that and it's just like awesome i love when i watch her videos because she really motivates me to try different things so i think that would be a really cool idea to try out in one of the prompts um we'll see we'll see how it goes but in the meantime, I encourage you to do the same. Try to do the, the accordion journal and see what you can do and just make it into a journal that you can create things and make it an idea book. You know, like I wanted to do an idea book. So I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna do with this. Just to give me ideas on what else I can create and do on journals. So, um, with that said, I'm going to leave it up to here and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the process of how I did the journal and let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next one. Bye now.